I was lured out here by a man. And, <laughs> and that was not, you know, the best choice, as it turned out. But I guess it was the best choice because I, when you think about it, I really kind of belonged here more than New York. Acting was what I wanted to do from the time I was eight years old. Never did I not want to act, including right now in this very moment I want to go act. Okay, so I was here in the very early 70s, and I did Tom Ian's show, The Dirty Show in Town. I was already not closeted. I was not necessarily out, but I didn't lie about it, or, or I didn't, you know, I didn't go to cocktail parties with women. I didn't play that game. I didn't wear a wedding ring, even though I was told to. I was told to by agents, you know, don't crush your legs and all that malarkey. I could do it. I did it on the Waltons, so I proved to everyone that I was able to play a straight part. And this friend of mine um, was telling me about GRID, was it gay-related immune deficiency? And shockingly enough, he said, oh, yes, yeah, somebody we know has it, him and I. And I said, who? And then he said, uh, he named this man, Sean Foreman, who was a somewhat prominent person in the community. And I asked Mark, I said, did you go visit? And can you catch it? I think that was a logical question. And he said, no, I, you can't catch it. Or I guess that had been uh, s supposed or implied or something, because I felt like I could visit. And he knew me, but he was clearly in some state of dementia. And he was circling the bed, just sort of muttering, circling, 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 circling. Just, what is this? It's just so painful. And I know I haven't processed it. How could you process that? I don't think I could process it in this lifetime. It, it was too many, too many deaths too quickly. I mean, there, there would be one on Tuesday and then one on Friday, and then one the following Friday. You could never catch up with grieving. You just couldn't. I wrote um, Intimacies, which was multi-character, multi, multi I, I could never get away with this piece today because I was playing, you know, I played a black female hooker and I played a Hispanic man. Uh, I played all these diverse, ethnically diverse and um, characters that were unlike me that weren't being depicted in the media. I felt like I was um, there to record it as an artist, certainly, and I was there to um, be physically present to, the, to those that were my friends as much as I could. That was a, my most profound artistic achievement and that took me all over the world and so somehow in the midst of this horror personal tragedy and grieving and losing still losing people left and right I was still in the midst of this personal storm I had this professional triumph and then, I don't know, shortly thereafter, a lover was dying. I had to stop doing the show. I left in the midst of the run, flew back to L.A. That was tough. What was his name? Philip. I had some, some heavy-hitting advisors where I didn't, I felt like I was lying and being dishonest when I didn't immediately say I was HIV positive when I was tested. I went to Morris Kite, the, one of the main leaders of, and certainly somebody who knew publicity. And I said, is this it? Is this my moment? Should I 
reveal that I'm, yes, he said. And he had, he had said to me, there will be a moment. When I asked him initially, I said, should I talk about being, I feel like I'm a liar. I feel like I'm being dishonest. He said, no, 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 no. Wait until the right moment. This is not the moment. So when the Brad Davis died, I called him once again. I said, is this the moment? Yes, it is. This is the moment. I come out as being HIV positive. What's the first thing that happens? Within days, I think within hours, I'm cast as an HIV character. Then what happens is I'm never cast as anything but HIV positive. I go into these roles, into makeup. They spend hours making me look like I have AIDS. I'm doing... Uh, a recurring part on Beverly Hills 90218 or whatever it's called. And I go in for, I have lost of costumes because it's recurring, so I have to have, you know. So I go in for an afternoon costume fitting and I'm fitting in. And I said, um, you know, this guy has AIDS and he's in a hospice and they're putting all these sweaters on top of sweaters and, and, uh, t-shirts matching colors with I said would he really be wearing these clothes I mean I'm not like a method actor on t uh, this is like playing the hairdresser I'm playing the person with AIDS I just thought I'd make a comment since it was a recurring role and I thought it would be nice to have a, a little modicum of reality to the character so I thought I'd voice some opinion. I'm, normally, you just don't do that in television. But I thought I would try. He said, oh, darling, this is Aaron spelling aids. No one thought I'd live to be 70 years old. But that was an impossibility to have a child and do all of the stuff I've done. That's kind of, that second act or third act or whatever is is miraculous it's miraculous